A few years ago, the American public woke up one morning to the realization that a rising China was on the trajectory to surpass the U.S. to become the world's largest economy and overtake the U.S. in terms of economic power. Last month. The American people woke up again to an upset. A previously unknown Chinese research lab released a large language AI model named DeepSeek V3. The valuation revealed that it not only surpassed top open source models such as Gwen 2.5, Alibaba's self-developed large model, and Llama 3.1, Meta's self-developed large model, but can even compete. With GPT-4, as well as top closed-source models such as Sonic and Thropic's self-developed large model, what was amazing about DeepSeek was that the firm purportedly only spent six million dollars to build the AI model, and it did it without expensive star engineers from prestigious American universities. In fact, their engineers were all. From local recent graduates from domestic Chinese universities, and there are only 139 of them, as opposed to more than 1,200 at ChatGPT and more than 500 at Anthropic. And that's not all. Last week, on January 20th, the world got shocked again when DeepSeek released DeepSeek R1, exceeding in many aspects. The performance of GPT-01, such as in math, coding, and reasoning, while costing 95% less. The product is now ranked number one on the Apple Store, with users raving about its transparency. DeepSeek said that R1 uses reinforcement learning technology on a large scale in the post-training stage. Which greatly improves the model's reasoning capability, with only very little labeled data. DeepSeek not only made all R1 training technology public, but also distilled six small models and opened them to the community, allowing users to train other models for free. The Chinese lab threatens the U.S. supremacy in the AI race and calls into questions. Of the true cost to build AI, against the backdrop of U.S. announcing a 500 billion StarGate project to build U.S. AI infrastructure, the tech market tumbled on Monday, January 27th. The loss will wipe out 1.2 trillion dollars in market value. Nvidia stock dropped 17%, Alphabet 3.4%, Amazon 3%, Meta 1.4%. Microsoft 3.2 percent and Tesla 2.7 percent at one point on Monday. What has happened to the U.S.? The tech world is shaken to the core. DeepSeek, which is the leading Chinese AI lab, their model、uh, is actually the top performing. The investment community is fearful, and the American public is shocked. Who is the person behind DeepSeek? It turns out the person is none other than Mr. Van Feng Lam. That's right, this guy, someone who you would have not have remembered, even if you run into him three times in a day. But the world should know him by now. Today, we will focus most of our attention on the hero in this story. Wen Feng was born in 1985 in Zhenjiang, Guangdong Province. His father was a primary school teacher. Besides the fact that Wen Feng showed interest and talent in math and science, there was no other report about his childhood years. At the age of 17, Wen Feng was admitted to Zhejiang University as number one from his region. He received his Bachelor of Engineering degree in Electronic Information in 2007, and a Master of Engineering in Information and Communication in 2010. His master dissertation was entitled "Research on Target Tracking Algorithm Based on Low-Cost 
PTZ camera, whatever that means. In 2008, Wang Fang formed a team with his classmates to accumulate data related to financial market. He also led the team to explore quantitative trading using machine learning and other technologies. Remember, that was back in 2008. At this time, the 2007-2008 financial crisis was at its peak. Rumor has it that Frank Wang, the founder of Da Jiang, a prominent Chinese drone company, asked Wen Feng to join his company. However, believing that AI would change the world, Wen Feng decided not to follow Frank. After graduation in 2010, Wen Fang moved to a cheap flat in Chengdu, Sichuan province, where he experimented with ways to apply AI to various fields. These ventures eventually failed until he tried applying AI to finance. In 2013, Wen Fang attempted to integrate AI with quantitative trading and found Ya Ke Bi, an investment management firm, with Xu Jin an anonymous from Zhejiang University. In 2015, the pair co-founded Huanfang Technology, or High Flyer, and relied on mathematics and AI to make investments. In the same year, there was a stock market crash in China, and the high-frequency quantitative investment strategy adopted by Wang Fang's team paid off and generated good investment returns. At that time, their company only had 10 GPUs. In October 2015, Wen Fang and others established 10 products in one day. In December of that year, another 10 products was added, rapidly improving the fund's fundraising capability. By the end of 2016, the amount of funds they managed was approximately 1 billion yuan, or about 140 million US dollars. On October 22, 2017, HiFlyer launched its first AI model, the first trading position generated by deep learning was executed online using GPUs for calculation. Prior to this, the algorithm of Wen Feng's team mainly relied on linear models and traditional machines, and the learning algorithm and model calculations mainly rely on CPUs. In 2017, Wen Fang led High Flyers to continue to expand the AI algorithm research team. By the end of 2017, almost all quantitative strategies had been calculated using AI models. The scale of funds they manage has also expanded to 3 billion yuan or 420 million US dollars. In 2018, Wen Fang established that the company's main development direction should be AI. And HiFire also won the Private Equity Golden Bull Award for the first time, the highest award in the field of private equity securities in China. At this time, HiFire encountered a computing power bottleneck. The increasing training requirements were limited by computing resources. Wang Feng began to seek large-scale computing power solutions. In 2019, Wen Feng founded HiFire AI Company and invested 200 million yuan to independently develop the deep learning training platform Yinghuo One, or Firefly One, which is equipped with 1,100 GPUs. On August 30th, 2019, Wing Fan delivered a keynote speech entitled A Programmer's Perspective on the Future of Quantitative Investment in China at the Golden Bowl Awards ceremony, which sparked a heated discussion. Wing Fan stated that the criteria for determining whether it is quantitative or non-quantitative trading is whether the investment decision is made by quantitative methods or by people. Quantitative funds don't have portfolio managers making the decisions, and instead, they only have servers. As a private equity company, investors have very high expectation of us. If we outperform the index by less than 25% a year, investors will be dissatisfied. 
Wing Fang pointed out. Quantitative investment have outperformed traditional technical traders. And in the future, you will also outperform those who also trade on fundamentals. At the end of the speech, he said, the mission of High Flyer is to improve the effectiveness of China's secondary market. During 2021, Wang Fang started buying thousands of NVIDIA GPUs for his AI side project while running High Flyer. The new training platform is called Yinghua 2 or Firefly 2. Industry insiders viewed his behavior as an eccentric action of a billionaire looking for a new hobby. One of Wang Feng's business partners said they initially didn't take Wang Feng seriously and described their first meeting as seeing a very nerdy guy with a terrible hairstyle who could not articulate his vision. Wing Fang simply said he wanted to build something and it would be a game changer, which his business partner thought was only possible by tech giants such as ByteDance or Alibaba. In 2021, HiFire became the first domestic quantitative private equity firm to exceed 100 billion yuan or 14 billion US dollars in scale and is known as one of the four kings of domestic quantitative private equity. Wow. In 2021, HiFire made terrible investment mistakes due to its AI model, resulting in its scale to decrease from 100 billion yuan to about 80 billion. It was forced to issue open letters to investors expressing its sincere apologies and commitment to work hard to fix the algorithm. It also proactively decreased its holdings to be about 50 billion yuan. In 2022, High Flyer announced that it had donated 220 million yuan and 138 million yuan to an employee whose alias is an ordinary pick to 15 different charities supporting 23 projects to help with the disadvantaged communities and in promoting social equities and development. Rumor has it that Wang Fang is that ordinary pick, but it has not been independently verified. In May 2023, Wang Fang announced that he will enter the field of artificial general intelligence and launched Deep Seek. During that month, in an interview with 36KR, Wang Feng stated that High Flyer has acquired over 10,000 of media's A100 GPUs before the U.S. government imposed AI chip restrictions on China. At the time, only five other companies own 10,000 or more GPUs, and all of them are big companies like ByteDance, Alibaba, Baidu, Tencent, and the like. This move laid the foundation for DeepSeek to operate as an LLM developer. Wing Feng also stated Deep Seas gets funding from High Fire. This was because venture capital firms were reluctant in providing funding, and it was unlikely that it would be able to generate an exit in a short period of time. In July 2024, Wang Feng was interviewed again by 36KR. He stated that when Deep Seek V2 was released, it triggered an AI price war in China. Because DeepSeek's API is set to be extremely low, 1 or 2 yuan per million tokens, other tech companies such as ByteDance, Alibaba, and Tencent and Baidu were forced to lower their price drastically. Because of that, DeepSeek was known as Pinduoduo in the AI world. It came as a huge surprise as DeepSeek team did not expect pricing to be so sensitive. What is also interesting to note is that Wen Feng also stated that DeepSea hasn't hired anyone particular special, and employees tend to be locally educated. In fact, 
DeepSeek appears to focus on new graduates with three to five years of experience. If someone has more than eight years of experience, chances are they may be outright rejected in the hiring process. In terms of management, the team is really flat, with each member of the team respected and given room to innovate. Irrespective of someone's title or experience, his or her ideas will be pushed forward as long as the idea is valid. Side note, Wing Feng also participate in writing and reviewing code along with all the other engineers and scientists. Wing Feng expressed the view that China must also gradually become a contributor rather than always be a freeloader. Wing Feng said in an interview with the media, we have become accustomed to Moore's law falling from the sky. After lying at home for 18 months, better hardware and software will always come out. It has been created tirelessly by the Western-dominated technology community for generations. China must have someone at the forefront of technology. When it comes to disruptive technology, Wing Fang says, closed source approaches can only temporarily delay others in catching up. As the goal was long term, Deep Seek sought employees who had the ability and passion rather than experience. Until this day, no one has paid a tons of attention to Wen Feng as an individual. I hope this video provides you with some insight as to who the real person is behind High Flyers and Deep Seek. What is it? that contributed to Wen Fang's overnight success. If you like our video, please subscribe, like and forward, so more people can watch and learn. Until next time, thank you.